Hey everyone, welcome to Green Learner. So today we are starting a new series about the Spring Cloud Config Server. So if you are following the videos about uh, uploaded on Green Learner channel, we are covering basically microservices. So as you are aware, the world software world is moving from monolithic to my distributed system. When we are talking about distributed system, microservices play very important role. Right. So let me brief you what we have covered so far on this channel. So this is the playlist that I have created microservices with the Spring Boot. Right. So we have covered pretty much under this how we can create the microservices, uh, what is it, and how we can use it and create uh, the microservices, and how to connect the database and how to handle the fault tolerancy and all these stuffs. It's time we cover Spring Cloud Config Server. So the agenda for this video is uh, only talking about the Spring Cloud Config Server and in general, what is Config Server and why do we need it uh, in microservices environment, in distributed environment, and what is the scenario in monolithic application? How do we do this? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First, why do we need Config Server, right? The configuration in distributed system is pretty much important, right? When we are talking about distributed system, microservices come into picture, right? Microservices means application is divided into small pieces. You have big application and you are dividing it into small functionalities, right? And they are combined, combined together, they are making the application. So main application makes call to these services, right? And perform the functions so changes in properties in different environment like dev test prod so if in software development life cycle when uh, the development plan is ready so developer first goes into the dev mode uh, then uh, he suppose for example if i take an example of creating a microservice right microservice which is interacting with the database right this microservice is interacting with database and to connect to database it needs username and password right so in the dev environment it, it should use a database which is entirely dedicated to for development purpose right so to connect to that database there will be some username password and for the test environment when the development is complete and software is moved to testing phase and quality people are performing the testing they will be connecting to the database which will be some different instance right and username and password will be different for the testing environment right in the same way when testing is complete the application finally we will go live and it will be in production when in production the database will be database instance will be different right suppose you are using oracle so there will be different oracle instance for the production different from test and development right so for that application to connect to database there will be different username password right so for development one username password for test one username password and for prod third username password so see when software is moving from one environment of development into another the things are changing right and how how you are planning to do this right you cannot do always the code changes right so when the software has been moved from dev to test and prod there is not it is not expected that you do the code changes right but you can do the changes in properties what i mean by properties if you're following the microservices and you're developing bc properties file properties and yet another version we have yaml right where we define the configuration properties of the application uh, which is to use uh, here we are taking the example of database where we are defining the username password in certain scenarios it can be a third party url right where you need the different keys in different environment right because they are providing some api for dev environment for test environment and another for production environment right so how do we make changes to properties and how we can do it effectively without starting and changing the codes this is the this is the place where config server plays an important role right so there are a bunch of properties file that are over there right so which defines 
which has the values of these properties and the respective values need to restart to change the config so as of now in monolithic application if you are not using config, config server and you are want to make changes to configuration you have to restart or redeploy your server your application right to affect the changes that you are making in your properties config file so but when spring cloud config comes into picture you can make the changes in your config files and it this these changes will reflect into your application at real time so you are saved yourself from restarting your application many times uh, as many times as you change your config properties right so it's time we see we understood why do we need config server right what is the importance of that so see what is config server so it is used for changing the configuration at runtime and for that we do not need to restart or redeploy our application right so yeah explain you and externalizing the configuration in one more we say we are externalizing the configuration right externalizing means we are changing the property configuration from outside without changing the code itself right and without redeploying or restarting the subsystem so it is ideal for cloud native cloud native application when we talk about we are talking about microservices we are talking about distributed system right distributed system so cloud environment gives you the facility to create microservices application on the fly right there are many stuffs uh, that you add the dependency and many things are accomplished uh, very easily right so that is the benefit of the cloud native application right so same comes with the config server also so now coming to what is spring cloud config server we understood config server what is it in general and now we are going to understand what is spring cloud config server and how we can create our own config server so if we talk about the documentation that is given on the spring cloud official website they say spring cloud config provides server and client side support for externalizing configuration in a distributed system right so all the things we talked about what do we need in distributed system it is provided by a spring cloud config server cloud config server and it supports the server and as well as client side support both side support we have for externalizing the configuration in distributed system or microservices right so spring cloud config server provides an http resource based api for external configuration so when you have config server it is providing you the rest endpoints right rest endpoints with the help of these rest endpoints you can get all the details about configuration that you are making the changes right so let's go ahead and see understand this diagrammatically and how it looks like uh, in the back end and how does it function so this is the uh, very rough diagram that i have created right so this is the spring cloud config server right and this is the application one service one this is the service four this is the service two and this is the service three so these are the service one which has these have sub config all of these applications have sub config right which are changing in nature when they are moving from dev to test to prod right so to make the changes in cloud config server we are making use of spring cloud config server so all of the four applications are connected to spring cloud config server so if we we want to do any changes in this service too then we are going to do the changes in respective file which is mapped with this service to configuration file and the changes will be changes will take up it immediately for the service too right so how does this spring cloud config server does this so is so cloud config server maintains the configuration details in a another repository which can be github right it can be github it can be bitbucket right or any local file system even local where your config server is running it can be local file system whichever is applicable for you it is supporting many options to maintain the configuration details which you are externalizing right so bitbucket git have local file system you can go any way that you want so the configuration file suppose username password that we are talking about username password it is has 
to connect to the database right it also has the same thing username password it has also the same thing and the things configuration details can be very different it can contain the third party details right which needs changing when we are moving to the environment different environment right and for these for service 1 service 4 service 2 service 3 we have different configuration files like s1 dot prop right and s2 dot properties and so on right so you make the changes to this repository and this repository being looked into by a spring cloud config server and this cloud config server is pushing the information to these services services we one term we call client these services we call client and this is the spring server right so they are looking into this spring cloud configuration server for those properties that are there and any changes being made to this repository whether bit github bit bucket or local file system these changes will take effect in a spring cloud config server and it will be notified to service 1234 in real time Right. So this is all about the Spring Cloud Config Server and how does it work and how we can take advantage of this. Right. So in the subsequent video, I am going to demo you how you can create a Spring Cloud Config Server. Right. And what are the properties of this? And we will also create the clients, different clients to use this Spring Cloud Config Server. We will make changes to our GitHub. We will map these properties and we will see how the changes are being reflected here at service one point right so i'll see you in the next video with the demo of this and this was all about talking right so let me show you something more so the code part that i will be explaining you can get that on github green learner repository cloud config i already have created right so this is the some examples so i'll also give the detail of the video and topics that we are covering right here in the readme property so you can just bookmark this page and you will see anything anything that i will change here right and or you can watch this and you will get the notification whenever i make changes to the code part right and coming to the youtube channel that i have so this is the spring cloud config playlist where i will be adding all the playlists all the videos about the spring cloud config also this is client config will go into this uh, big playlist that we have with microservices with the spring boot so you will get all the information about this right on the code part on the youtube channel right so i'll see you in the next video with the demo of the spring cloud config server right so till then you just revise these and understand understand this and you see any issue and you're not getting any point you put that in comment section i'll be happy to help you out so see you in the next video take care bye bye